In this video, we're going to carry on designing our plastic housing in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with our plastic housing design in Fusion 360 using our surfacing tools. Now there are some very important topics that are gonna come up in this video, and this is really where we start to focus on things like draft. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna take a look at our design from the right and from the front, and note that right now we've just got a surface. A surface has curvature to it, but the direction of pull is gonna be in the positive and negative Z direction. So that means that the face that we created, the angle that's on it, none of that matters at all. What's going to matter is what happens when we leave this surface. If we are just gonna go up and we start to create a vertical edge, it's not going to be able to be drafted. It's not gonna be able to be removed from a mold. We can get away with that for a very small distance, but keeping in mind that we likely will see drag marks. So what we need to do from here is we need to really plan where the two halves of our part is going to come together. The reason for that is because Anything up to that point should be drafted so that we have our part getting larger as we go in the positive Z direction, meaning that everything can be molded and pulled from the outside. So there are a couple different ways that we can consider this. We did a lot of work to make sure that the housing shape was, was fairly nice. So what we could do from here is we could manually create something like a ruled surface. We could go from here. We could use the direction option. And we could say that we want to go toward our XY plane. So I'm going to hold down, uh, in this case, I want to reselect that. I want to make sure that I'm using the plane. And to do that, I'm going to hold down the left mouse button, select XY, view this from the right hand side, and I'm going to put my draft. And now I've got two degrees going outward. So any direction I look at this from the front or from the side, we now have two degrees going outward. Well, fillets generally are avoided on concepts or on organic shapes. When we're talking about manufacturing a part, a plastic part specifically, when we've got a corner like this, a fillet with a standard radius is going to be helpful for manufacture because that means that the tool paths will be a little bit easier for us to do. So what I wanna think about is where I need this to, to actually meet and is that meeting point or is that intersection going to be in the middle of a connector, for example? Is it gonna come all the way underneath the microcontroller? Is it gonna cover this board completely? And the reason that we need to, to think about this is because it's going to determine how we make openings for our connectors. So as we look at this from the side, if I bring this back down, if we stop here, or if we at least come up flat to the bottom of the circuit board, then the opening for this connector is gonna be entirely in the top section of the housing. Now the top section of the housing is going to be pretty tall. And that's something that we wanna be careful of. Now in the Hammond box, all of the, all of the box was on one side and the bottom was essentially a flat plate. But we can do a little bit better than that by bringing this up to a certain point. So we can go in between the connector and then we can make use of splitting the opening for the connector in the top and the bottom. Now, there are some reasons that you might do that. If you have a connector that is panel mounted or is going to be integrated into the housing, this will let you create some features where you can potentially drop things like, uh, like nuts or hardware into the plastic wall. Now, this is great for connectors like DB connectors things that you would typically see on older computers for like VGA monitors, but you still see them a lot in electronics. Now, in our case, everything is board mounted, so we're not gonna really be concerned with attaching to the housing. But again, we do need to be mindful of things like the distance that we're traveling, because the further we go, the higher we go, then we have to be mindful of things like tapering walls, if walls are getting too thin at the top or if they're too thick at the bottom. So for this example, I'm thinking I wanna go up to nine millimeters, and then I'm gonna come back and trim this flat. I'm gonna go back down to about eight millimeters. So I'm gonna say, okay. Then I'm gonna take a look at where the default plane is. So you can see the default plane is way down here, so that's, that's not really where I want it. So I'm gonna start a new sketch, 
I'm gonna select my, in this case, my YZ plane, and I wanna create a horizontal line. This horizontal line is going to be our trim line. Keep in mind that we could also do this by offsetting a plane, either would work fine, and it just kinda of depends on your preferences. I'm gonna create another line from the midpoint of this line to my origin, I'm gonna hit escape, I'm gonna make that vertical, and I'm also gonna make it construction. So I wanna make sure that that line is construction. Uh, so, so keep in mind that when we do this, the reason we're using that reference line is simply to make sure that this line is easier for us to define. We don't have to worry about its width as much because its midpoint is here. So we can say D on the keyboard and we can add a dimension and we can just give it something that we know is wider than our housing. But then we need to determine the height of it. Now remember I said we were gonna go up eight millimeters, but that was from this edge down here. So really what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up probably about four millimeters, and that's gonna be our, our eight millimeter point because we went four millimeters down to get to our surface. So now that we have that, we're gonna use it as a trim tool. So trim tool will be that line. Again, this could be an offset plane. The main reason that you would use a line or a sketch is if it wasn't going to be perfectly straight, which is why I wanna show that method as opposed to creating an offset plane. We're gonna say, okay, and again, trims are not consuming our sketches, so we need to go ahead and turn it off. And I'm gonna call this bottom trim plane. So that way I remember what it is. So now if we look at this from the right or from the front or back, we have a perfectly flat intersection, a perfectly flat lip. So now what we wanna do is we wanna stitch these things together. So this, this new piece that we created in this original piece, we're gonna say, okay. Another thing that I do wanna mention, because we split the faces up on the bottom before we did this, those splits were carried up into this new surface. So that's going to be true if we're gonna use an extend or if you're gonna come in and use a rule. So either of those will carry on any divisions that we have in the surface. Now that's really helpful because again, we're gonna work in quadrants. We're gonna focus on quadrants to help us minimize the amount we have to design at once. The benefit of using the surface method is that we can focus on individual faces or small groups of faces rather than the entire shape. So this helps us in our design process and the fact that we can carry those up is helpful. The next thing I'm gonna do is, even though I generally avoid it, I'm gonna use a fillet and I wanna bring this fillet in. Remember that our housing is going to be two millimeters thick. That's gonna be our wall thickness. So if this is the inside surface, then we don't really have to worry about the radius value as much, it can be more cosmetic. However, if we're gonna thicken inward, if we're gonna bring this in two millimeters, that's gonna leave a radius on the inside of half a millimeter left. So we, we need to be mindful of this because if we made this too small, we would get a sharp corner on the inside. So since we don't know if we're gonna be thickening inward or outward just yet, it's still open for a debate, I'm gonna make sure that this is larger than my wall thickness for now. What we could do is we could create a mathematical operator. I could say W for wall thickness, and then I can add one. I can add a millimeter, which would make it three millimeters, and that would give me a millimeter radius on the inside. Just to make sure we understand that, we're gonna do a quick offset of the entire body. I'm gonna offset it inward two millimeters. So when I go inward two millimeters, let's hide the PCBs for now. When I go inward two millimeters, you can see I'm left with a one millimeter fillet on the inside. If I go further than that, if I go into three, you can see as soon as I got to three, now we have a sharp corner. So these are things that we need to be mindful of when we're planning out things like adding fillets to a design. Another thing to consider when we're looking at things like fillets is right now we're using the default fillet tangent type. We have curvature continuity and curvature continuity is actually gonna give us a different result in this case. So let's take a look at this. If I change this to tangent, or I go curvature continuous, the curvature continuous is going to take the flat section, which in theory has no curvature, and it's going to take the section on the bottom that's curved, and it's gonna take into account their radius of curvature, the influence it has on it. When we look at just tangent, the tangency is only looking at the direction. We can affect it by increasing or decreasing this tangency weight. So you can see if I increase it to two, I'm getting more of a squared corner. 
but this can be a, a little bit dangerous. You need to be careful with, with adjusting these values and make sure that you really understand the implications. So if I use curvature and increase this to two, you can see that I'm getting a tighter corner. Now this tighter corner can give us a pretty good result. You can see that it, it looks pretty good, but if we go too far with this number, so let's say that I go to three, then you can see that it fails, it goes too far. So we do need to be mindful of, of what we're changing and make sure that we're not actually getting this wall to go back out and back in because obviously that'll have a negative effect on whether or not we can get this thing out of a mold. So if I go to 1.5, that looks pretty good, pretty gradual. The other thing to note is that we're working off the radius type constant. Now, if we were to use chord length, chord length allows us to determine the actual value of that radius and it'll keep that consistent. And this really helps if you've got sections where the intersecting surfaces are really steep and they go to really shallow. Because in those cases, you'll get a very narrow fillet and then a very wide fillet, where the chord length will help control that. In our case, we're not gonna see much of a difference because we created a ruled surface at two degrees away from our edge. And the edge had a very gradual curve on it. You will note that there is some difference here but part of it is based on the fact that we're going from three millimeters to 4.23. So if we change this to three, you can see that it's a very tight radius here. And if we change it back to constant, you can see that it went back down to 2.12. So just be mindful of these values and as you change them. Variable is not gonna be a good option here, but if we wanted the fillet to be larger on one side and smaller on the other, we could use a variable to go around. So we're gonna say, okay, and now we've got that fillet, that three millimeter fillet on the outside. We adjusted some values. We used curvature continuity, and this is gonna help us get a good consistent finish. Now, I do also wanna make another note here. This is not a full surfacing course. We're really looking at these surfacing tools in the context of an injection molded plastic part. There is a lot more that we could cover here. For example, instead of having that filleted corner, we could use things like patch, and then we could use curvature continuity in the corner, and we could modify these values, and we could play around with these numbers. We could use tangency in the corner. But in general, there, there are a lot of different nuances to the way in which you create surfaces and the implications downstream. And I wanna make sure that we understand that this is not a best practices surface video. This is really focusing on these tools as we're using them for injection molding. So again, this is just kind of a, a, an aside to what we're doing here, but I do wanna make sure that we understand that there are a lot of other ways that we can create surfaces and we just wanna be mindful of them. So that last attempt at quickly deleting a face and, and patching it, unfortunately crashed Fusion. But uh, Fusion does a really good job of saving a recovery so um, I didn't really lose any work. Uh, so I'm gonna do a quick save here. And I think that this is probably a, a good place to stop, but I do want to mention or ask a question. Now, as we're designing parts, as we're designing plastic parts specifically, we have to be consi consistent with the, the shape of the design, the flow, where we make our decisions on curvature and things like that. But there are some other things that we need to be mindful of, and that's the intersection between parts. Now, everything we have at this point has a two degree draft outward on it, which means that it can easily be pulled in the minus Z direction. But I want you to think about the tools that we have at our disposal. And what's the difference between thickening this two millimeters to get our, our housing thickness, or between patching the top and turning it into a solid and thickening it two millimeters. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk about the differences between those and why we choose one over the other. But I think that's a good question to leave you on because uh, there are implications, there are reasons why you would do one over the other. And I wanna make sure that we understand that going forward. So at this point, we've done a pretty good job making a very gradual shaped housing. It's got nice curvature on the bottom. It's nice and smooth. You can see the reflections look great. Uh, we, did add a fillet to the bottom corner, which I mentioned is generally something I don't do, but 
we did get pretty good results using the curvature continuity and playing around with the weights a little bit. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I think from a manufacturer standpoint, I think this is a good result. And um, everything so far fits inside. We just need to decide if we're going outward with this design or inward with the design. And we'll make those design decisions in the next video. But at this point, if you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.